I have noticed a lot of people that are artists that, you know, that are, you know, they're brilliant and everything, but they, they're very introverted and they don't really like want to put themselves out there because that doesn't feel comfortable for them. And sometimes you're just going to have to. And so if you have things kind of in your back pocket that you know what to talk about, it will help you a lot. Hi everyone, welcome to Behind the Booth. I'm Jade and with me as always is my co-host and producer, Heather. And on this channel, we talk about wild stories from Comic-Con vendors uh, because uh, Jade is a Comic-Con vendor. She has her own booth and we go to Comic-Cons all over the country. We're gonna be going internationally soon and we're really excited, right? We're excited. It's gonna be fun. Ugh. She's yeah. terrified, but we're excited. I am. It's it's like the same emotion. It's fine. Um, but we have a list of all the ones that we're going to be at, and we would love to meet you. So please come find us at the Tokyo Dog Designs booth. Um, and this episode, I usually say like what the episode is going to be about, but Jade is apparently just going to ask me some questions, and I have no idea what we're talking about. So just go ahead. So I'm surprising Heather today with what we're talking about because um, at as a vendor, I've been interviewed actually quite a bit uh, for various podcasts and documentaries and promotions for shows and things like that. And I'm pretty comfortable being interviewed because, you know, I'm, I am a public speaker. I don't know if you can really tell with how I'm talking about stuff and my <laughs> word choice here on this podcast, but you're um, swearing. Yeah. My swearing, yeah, you, you technically don't do that on stage. They don't want you to do that. Um, but I'm pretty comfortable with, with speaking. Um, and I've been interviewed quite a bit, but I've seen people at other booths get interviewed and they're not ready for it. They're not comfortable. And since this is what Heather does professionally, yeah. um, I would love to hear some of Heather's top tips on how to interview somebody. So here's me taking her spot today. So Heather, <laughs> what is your... What is the first thing someone should think about when somebody asks like, hey, can we interview you? Okay, so am I being the, like, am I ask, or answering these as the interviewer or the interviewee? Uh, you are answering these as suggestions for the booth person who is trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. So- Like what they're supposed to answer? Uh, yeah, so uh, I probably should have told you this part. Um, so a lot of times when you're at your booth, you're caught off guard when people want to interview you and right, yeah. you don't really know what to say or what to prepare or how to answer. So if, you know, from a POS, yeah. like whatever kind of, you know, interview podcast to maybe something like really professional, like BBC, how should they answer questions? What is okay. your best recommendation on how a booth person should answer questions as they're interviewed? Okay. That's kind of what no. I'm for. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great topic because like a lot of people at booths are, you know, you're artists. You're mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not in the world where you're going to be having to answer questions, but sometimes that will come up. Like you said, people just surprise you and be like, "Hey, I would love to talk to you about this." And, you know, uh, all what are they, how do they say that? Like all marketing is good marketing or just like getting your name out there all is always is good. good. News. Yeah. All news all is good news, is good. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like you want to get out there. And so you don't want to be like, no, just because you're uncomfortable. Okay, so it, like for me, it's really easy because I am an extrovert and I've been on stage a lot because I love acting and like I just I talk a lot like I am really good at small talk. And so it comes very easy for me. But like I know a lot of people aren't and I have noticed a lot of people that are artists that, you know, that are, you know, they're brilliant and everything, but they, they're very introverted and they don't really like want to put themselves out there because that doesn't feel comfortable for them. And sometimes you're just going to have to. And so if you have things kind of in your back pocket that you know what to talk about, it will help you a lot. And so in these situations, especially when it comes to your booth, like, you know, your product, like you need to, you need to put, get that yeah. through your head. You know, your product, you know what you're doing. You are there. You have made it like, congratulations, you're amazing. So like, get out of your head of being like, oh, I mean, we all get imposter syndrome. I have imposter syndrome pretty much on the daily as a, as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as everything. <laughs> and so you're going to have that, but like, get over it. <laughs> That's a really mean way to say that. Suck it up. Like, yeah, suck it up because you're amazing and, you're, and you've gotten there. And hopefully the person that's going to ask, ask you questions, if I was your interviewer, obviously I'd be like boosting you up the whole time. Hopefully they will be too. But even if they're not, have some things in your back pocket that you know you can say. Both Jade and I come from like an entrepreneur background at this point. Like, um, you know, so they talk a lot about having your elevator pitch. 
right? Yeah. Having something like really short um, that people ask, what do you do? And you're not like, uh, you know, like, oh, well, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a virtual assistant. Like I had, yeah. I had a whole thing prepared of like, this is what I talk about. This is what I do. This is what I do for people. This is how I help them. You know, this stuff about your booth, about your product. And so be like, just have it in your back pocket of something that sums up what you do, why you're passionate about it, because there is a good reason. And people, people love to hear this stuff, right? That's yeah. why they're interviewing they stories. You. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, that imposter syndrome can creep into everything, but you are completely worthy of being there. You are worthy of having these questions asked of you. Like they are asking you for a reason. They're not like, oh, I don't know who to pick. I guess that dude over there, like, no, they want to ask you these questions and you are, are worthy of answering these questions and having people talk to you and want to know your story. People love to hear your story. So like, there's it's so there's, be a, there's a question that i have for you about this yeah so one thing i have seen about other people when they get interviewed is it's all about them it's the me 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 i i i how do you recommend that people talk about their stories and themselves and their products without coming from an egotistical like i'm so great or you know they're insecure so they over talk about themselves what's your best advice for that okay well this is something that I've been learning in the last few years as, you know, becoming an entrepreneur and having a service-based, uh, uh, business. Um, I, I, I wasn't great about, at talking about myself, but I was forced to reframe it in how do I help other people? How does your product bring joy to other people? You know, like whether you're selling Funko pops because people love to, you know, like get those and put them all over their houses whether you're selling <laughs> what I just have them on walls just everywhere I I love it. everywhere my brother does he built shelves specifically mm -hmm. for its funko pops a giant nerd uh <laughs> i love it but like or you sell squishies like like jade does you know the little the little squishy things that people just love to hold on to and like their sensory like there are you know what your product does for people because you're selling it you know you know what it does for you you know why why do you have this product why does it make sense that other people would want it but reframing it into as opposed to well like you said they can you can overcompensate and be like well i'm so amazing and this is this is my stuff and look at what i've done that's that's great i you know i had to get you over that hump you're worthy of being asked the questions yes now let's get into it's 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 almost a sales technique right of um i apologize my sprinklers are running so it's noisy <laughs> but it's a sales technique of figuring out why would somebody want this like why why is there somebody out there that needs this product from me and why am i the best person to give it to them like mm -hmm. you need to think about what does my product do for other people and so that's that's a good way to be like <laughs> uh, I don't know quite how to say this, but like people want to buy from you. They're not, they're not going to th be thinking, oh, this is the greatest person I've ever met. Like they're so accomplished. They're so amazing. I want to buy from them. They're going to be thinking that product is really cool. I want to buy that because of what it'll do for me because we are selfish mm -hmm. creatures. Like that's what we are as humans and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. And so play into that be like, okay, yeah, I know what this can do for you. This is going to make your life better this way. You know, even if it is some silly little thing, those little squishies that helps sensory people so much. My gosh, like we'll see people after they've bought our squishies, we'll see them walking around and they're still like doing that because it, mm -hmm. it helps, but you know, it does. And so like, you have to think about what are you going to, what is it going to do for them? And the reason I asked you that is because you actually helped me curtail my pitch. And so the first time I talked about my stencils, you're like, but how did you make them? Why did you make them? And that story of like, oh, well, I was getting really bad carpal tunnel and I couldn't do origami anymore. So I made this so that I could make it faster. And you're like, that's what you need to tell people. Yeah. Cause I was just telling people how it worked. And I was like, but I don't want to talk about myself, Heather. And you're like, yeah, but that's an important part as to how you got from point A to point B. And yeah. then point C is you can do it too. Like yeah. it's easy. You can do People it too. People will relate to that. 
Exactly. So that relatable thing is, is an important part of the interview. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about like more stuff that you have on your booth, right? Like all the sensory stuff that you have on your booth. She has little Zen gardens. Um, yeah. She has the pins. Like there's stuff that makes, yeah, the, the LGBTQIA plus pins. I got all the letters. Yay. Yes. Um, <laughs> and like she, the squishies that we sell, usually when you buy those or my kids get like tons of them from school for some reason, I don't know, they come home with millions of them, but they're always so sticky and like, it's disgusting. And I throw it away after like a day because it just picks up everything. But Jade actually treats them so they're soft instead of squishy, but that was her own personal preference. She just didn't like the way that they felt. And so she like made them things. soft. Yeah. yeah. And so then people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. She's like, yeah, it's because you always say it's because my brain is broken that I have to, you know, yeah. make things that, <laughs> brain's weird. that are brain better for something. me. <laughs> or like the Zen gardens that? when I made those. I made those yeah. for myself when I got overstressed at these events and then people wanted to buy them. And so I made them for other people. And so yeah. these these small stories like help. But another important part of the, the interview process that you talk about so well is when you put in your own plug. So when they say, you always have the interview say like, well, where can people find you? Or where can people buy your product or where, whatever? There is a specific way that you can do it that is all encompassing and doesn't drag on. And you don't talk about all your stuff that's on your thing. It's just how to get to you and it's cut short and sweet. So what's the formula for that, Heather? Well, there's some like back work that you have to do with that, right? You have to set up everything with like the same three, four words right? Like have your Instagram. Um, like we'll talk about the podcast, for example, our Instagram is at either at talk behind the booth or at behind the booth. Our TikTok is at behind the booth. Our email is talk behind the booth at gmail.com. Our Facebook is, you know, slash talk behind, or behind the booth. Like everything is just that. So you can say, you can find me at behind the booth anywhere. Like that's, that's something that you can just kind of it's easy for people to remember, especially, you know, if you have a really good name, Jade has Tokyo dog designs. And so everything that she has, every account that she has is at Tokyo dog designs, Tokyo dog designs mm -hmm. at gmail.com. It's easy to remember. It's just one thing. And then you don't have to be like, Oh, well, my email is, is this and this, and you don't have to like pay for the fancy email either. Like you can just get a Gmail account. Everybody has one. It's fine. Um, but just change like, make sure everything is cohesive and works together because people will be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll remember that. Or they can just write that down instead of having to write, Oh, here's your email. Okay. Here's your Instagram. Um, another way that you can do it is be like, Hey, actually, could you just pull up Instagram really quick and I'll find me and you know, or a lot of things that we've actually been doing is I'll, get out my phone and be like, Hey, can I follow you on Instagram? That's actually a better way to do it because you don't want to be like, Hey, I'll make you follow me. Like follow right. them. Yeah. That's weird. like, yeah, it is weird. So it'll be like, I'll follow you. And you know, if you want to talk to me, that's fine. If you don't, that's like, whatever, that's, that's your choice, but you're following you you. them. Yeah, yeah. You do you. Well, and the best way to do it is have your phone out and be like, Hey, can you find yourself on Instagram for me? Just bring it up and have them type it in because a lot of times it'll be some weird random name that you will be able to spell and they'll, yeah. and they'll have to, they'll have to explain it and it'll be confusing. And then like the whole experience will go downwards, but like it's keep the energy up. Exactly. <laughs> it keep the energy up, like be positive. And you know, it's, it's exciting to do stuff like this because you're making connections and you're, you're making friends. Um, and then when they see that follow later that day, they're like, Oh yeah, that was that great. That was that great person that talked to me about this, you know? Um, because you will have said, behind the booth like a million times and so they'll be like yeah. oh yeah sure that was them like <laughs> so, i know when i've been interviewed and they're like hey where can people find you oh I, I always have this and again i learned this from heather it was like well all of our social media is at tokyo dog designs or you can find us online at tokyo dog designs.com yeah and it's that double feature into there and um you don't need to do like www dot or anything like that. You can just say everybody what it is. knows that's there. <laughs> yeah, unless it's dot org or dot you know net or whatever. Yeah. Just make sure you're very clear with that. But most people will search you or Google you by dot com. So yeah. if that's what you happen to have, uh, do make that very clear. Um, but these are just small things that we recommend that when you get your interviews, whether it's you know on a podcast or a video or just somebody that's literally coming up with you to a tape recorder. I had somebody put a tape recorder 
in my face <laughs> and you'll never know you'll never know if you make it onto their podcast you know they're just trying to grab content you never know if you're yeah. gonna actually make it into that documentary if you get cut but yep you know the the main thing that heather says before every interview is like it's gonna be fine just be yourself and i know that sounds so like cheesy or whatever from high school like just be yourself you'll get friends but like being your authentic self because these people that are interviewing i mean heather is one of those people that walks around the convention and they've already made a couple laps watching people and looking at people and they've already made decisions on who they want and who they don't so yeah. you've already made that like initial cut it's like a first date right you've already made it through the first date so now we're on second or third date material here yep. um and then they're talking to you and they expect you to freeze up or clam up and when they have a good interview that's who makes it into the podcast and that's who makes and, and they are typically if they're interviewing they're they're not usually um amateurs they're usually like comfortable doing it like Heather can interview anybody on anything. You can give her questions or she'll just come up with stuff to ask and they'll be engaged. Even if I know topic. nothing about your topic. Like. Yeah, <laughs> she can interview anybody over anything and she they will ask informative questions. And the best thing you can do is just think before you speak for sure. Mm -hmm. And just be excited about it. You don't have to be like my level of excited with the craziness and the squeaking, um, but you know, don't look like you don't want to be there don't treat it like it's the dmv like you know like things are things are good and you'd be it'd be it's so crazy when you see yourself on someone else's platform for the first time mm -hmm. it's like you feel like a celebrity you really do it's really cool it's very cool and you don't know what that's going to come back and bring to your business so yep. one of our mentors and always says say yes to everything uh that can be a little weird depending on where you are but say yes to the interviews but if you're ever curious or whatever you can always reach out to heather at nerdy girl podcast this is literally what she does and um she's got lots of great tips and tricks too many for us to fit into this episode of course yeah. um but anything well, you want to leave people with last minute here heather like if they don't do anything be sure to do x what is that x well the thing to remember is the first few times this happens it will feel weird and it will like you will feel uncomfortable i mean you know i've been doing this for a while so it feels great but like my first podcast episodes where i was interviewing i'm like i don't know what to do and i had like a perfect script and it was it was uncomfortable and weird but then you get over it and you figure it out and you figure okay this is actually this actually works better in my favor so give yourself grace like yeah. sure like i said you know have that you know elevator pitch kind of in your back pocket to figure out what you want to talk about and how you serve others and everything like that but allow yourself room to grow because everything is going to change like you're what you're maybe even what you're selling is going to change eventually and so give yourself time to figure out how that works don't be too hard on yourself because it's it's you know it's a learned thing and also you're not you're not up on stage you're not doing anything too crazy you're on a podcast usually people will just listen to them they won't even look at you so like mm -hmm. don't even worry about it like it's 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 easy it's fun and hopefully the people that are interviewing you i can do another one on how to interview because that's that's a whole other art form that people need to know about but like hopefully they know what they're doing and they'll be able to guide you but just have fun relax and give yourself room to grow we hope this was very helpful for those of you who have booths that are randomly getting interviewed and a special thank you to nerdy girl podcast for sponsoring this episode we'll see you next time <laughs>